Greetings, Steve with FlowChecker here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up these moving average labels. We'll go ahead and install them and customize them. And I'm going to talk about why they might be helpful to you. But as always, if you like our videos, please subscribe and check out our site FlowChecker when you get a chance. You can come here and type in your favorite stock and just compare um, the float short interest across several different financial websites all in one easy search. It's just meant to get you the information as fast as possible. Okay. Now you can see my, in my chart area here, I got a lot going on. I'm going to go up to my studies beaker here. I'm going to remove those labels for now. And you'll see, I have set up the default, um, simple moving average lines that thinkorswim provides. Okay. And you know, you can research what a moving average is, but essentially, for example, for the nine moving average, you're going to look at the closing price for the last nine bars. You're going to add those up and divide by nine. You're going to plot those over time and you get these lines that you see on the chart. Okay. Now what I've never liked about the think or swim moving average lines, these simple moving average lines. Let's look, for example, this light blue or light purple is actually the 200 day moving average. Now, I'm at the one minute time frame. Now watch what happens when I go to the, it's showing at about 558 or so is the price. Um, when I go to the five minute, it's now calculating here. It is down at 438. Um, when I change the to a one day, we have it up here um, at, you know, in, in the $7 range. Now, it's because it's calculating the moving average based on the time frame that you're looking at. So that's just, I find it very confusing. And I also don't really personally like to have all these lines on my chart. I want to clean things up, but I also want to be cognizant of where things like the 200 day moving average is. Now, why these things are important? Well, simply put, a lot of traders respect them. So especially for the longer time frames, like the 50 day or the 200 day, um, those could be significant areas of resistance or support. So it's something that you should be aware of. And I'll show you some examples, but we're, we're going to go ahead and install those labels. Um, to do that, we're going to go back to our beakers. We're going to come down here to create. Okay. And remove this default text. Okay. And we're going to label this. We can label this. You can label it whatever you want. Call it M A labels and then we're going to go ahead i'm going to copy and paste a script and i'll have a link to the blog where you can get this script and then i'm going to copy it oh bear with me here for a minute i'm going to copy and paste it in here just go ahead and control v to paste on my Windows machine and press OK, apply, and there we have our labels. Now, now when I'm looking, let's go ahead and compare this purple line to this light purple line here. Okay, on the one, so on the one year it is showing at around, let's see if we zoom in, yeah. Looks to be at around 7, 20, 7, 19, and it's showing up in our label here. And now you can see that label, when we go to the one minute time frame, that label is not going to change. It's still going to reflect that the 200 day moving, simple moving average is at 7, 19. Now, this was important. I'm going to show you why. Let's, let's go to this stock I traded. It's about a week or so ago the stock APDN. Was it APDN? Yeah. Now you can see it had a big move on August 2nd. Actually opened down around $1.30, got as high as two, four dollars and then settled back down along this 200 day moving average of 2.84. But look what happened. If you looked at this chart intraday, I'm going to bring up a video that I took. It actually moved up. You can see it went into a halt and it actually got right up 
almost to that 200 day moving year, moving average and came back down that morning. So you could have grabbed some profits in this move. Now, if you held, of course, if you held, of course, the stock actually went back up later in the day, closed down. But this indicated here that we started to see a bullish move above the 200 day moving average. And this was kind of a multi-day runner if you held on to it. Um, another example, recently, I remember the stock sends has been seeing some volume and it has been working its way along the 200 day moving average. Okay. And now it'll be interesting to see after today, it seems like if we can close above it, maybe this will be set up for even higher moves. And the stock that we started to look at, at the beginning of the video, see this stock, see this stock today got up to just about the 200 day moving average and started to come back down. So if you traded this intraday, Let's zoom back out. Traded this intraday. You might have seen it move up. Coming up near high of 704, 200 day moving average. 719, it could have moved up a little bit more, but you might have decided to take profits if you had gotten in earlier in the day. So this is why it's good to be sort of aware of these levels. And in fact, with these labels here, I can get rid of some of these moving averages at least and still be aware of where those price ranges are. Okay. Now, if you want to make adjustments, it's very easy to do. Um, we'll go back to studies, your study speaker, go to your labels and you can change the time frames here. You can change them to anything you want. I just have some standard ones here, 20, 50, 200. You can put a nine there. Now these are set to be pegged at a 20 day, 50 day, 200 day. That's depicted here in this aggregation period for day. You can change that. If you go to things script and you look at the if you type in things script aggregation period, you can change that value that day. I'll show you, you can change it to minute to all these different time frames If you would like to, all you need to do is change that right here where it says day. Um, if you don't like these colors, you can simply change these colors here. These are just RGB codes. Again, very simple to do. You go to a color picker like this type of site and you click around and you could just take these RGB values and replace them here in the script. If these are too many labels for you, I've got actually simple moving average and exponential moving average. If these are too many for you, you can simply delete them or just comment them out with a hash mark here. You see those comments and you just hit apply and okay. All right. And if you want to delete it, you just remove it right here with the X. Okay. So I hope that helps you out. I hope it gives you a sense of, um, you know, why these type of levels can be important and we'll talk again in the next one. Take care.